Okay, in this first video, I'm going to be showing you how to model a simple sword like this. Uh, there's not a lot going on to it, but um, it's going to kind of introduce us to some of the ideas that I wanted you guys to get familiar with for some more advanced objects. Okay, okay so I started a fresh Maya file. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my reference because I'm going to be using for this example an image that I'm going to get the proportions from. So you can download the um, sword reference image for this demo or for this exercise. And then when you download it, you can go to, um, first thing at first is we want to choose a viewpoint for that to be shown in. So right now I'm working in my default viewport with the perspective camera. And I can check that by going to panels, perspective. I'm using the persp camera. So I'm going to go over to this panel right here, which is the two panel layout. It's going to give me a front camera. It should look like this. And then my perspective camera. So I'll be working in both of these. I'll use this one to match against my reference and this one to kind of look at it in 3D. So inside this viewport over here, I'm going to go to view, image plane, import image. And I'm going to find my file. In my case, mine is an, I believe, nope, wrong one, sorry. Here it is. All right, it's this sword right here. I'm going to click open. Okay. Uh, I'll turn off the grid so you can see it, but it should just line up right with the grid. Um, and I drew this little middle line, just I did it as best I can. The sword's kind of warped or the photography has some distortion. Um, but I try to get down the middle of the picture and I'm going to turn that on. And you can see it kind of lines up right in the middle. And it won't be perfect, but that's okay. Um, we'll, it'll be, ours will be, um, we'll keep it symmetrical and it'll just go off reference a little bit. First thing, I also want to go ahead and not have this scene in my 3D view because it's going to get in the way as I'm modeling. Um, so I'm going to go to the attribute editor for the image plane and then click on this first button, which is look through camera front. And so it's only looking through this camera and not all of my cameras. I'm also going to make it, I'm going to turn off this grid. Just click, click on that little grid button. I'm also going to bring the transparency down. So I'll just bring it down a little bit. Yeah, enough that I can see the details um, on the model. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the handle and the hilt. So I'll start with the hilt or the handle first. So I'll drop in a polygon cylinder. Um, mine is defaulted to eight subdivisions, which is a pretty decent number. I usually at least have eight at a minimum personally. Um, what that does is it gives you a, edges that line up at each axis, right? So in each direction, so they, they're symmetrical, or I can have a middle line going down, splitting this axis and a middle line going this axis. And then I also have corners that can round out. So you can see I have four corners around the sides. Let me go ahead and grab those. I'll grab those corner ones. Not that one. You'll see. Uh, let's go ahead and if I if this was like a, a cube and I had eight sides, you could grab four corners and pull them in to get a rounded shape. So, anyways, eight's my the magic number to me. Okay. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cylinder and I'm going to pull it up. Oh, one other thing I have is I also have my subdivision cap set to zero, and that's just so I don't have to if because I'm going to delete these faces on the top. It's kind of annoying to have to select each of these um, triangles. I could just hold tab for paint selecting, which is makes it a lot quicker. So I could do that too. I'll just grab these and let's go ahead and delete them all. All right. So I'm going to come over here to this front view. And I'm going to grab these top vertices in vertex mode. I'm going to move this up. And I'm going to scale it down below this. There's a little medallion, which will add to the, the pommel. So I'll pull this up, and I grab it right there, and I'll scale it down. And so what I'm doing is I'm just trying to match against the reference image as best I can. Like I said, I'm, this is off a real object, and it's not perfect drawing. So or it's not like a if, the, if you do a drawing or a blueprint or some kind of um, orthographic drawing, you can get perfect symmetry. But most objects are photographed in real life. You're not going to get perfect symmetry in the actual photograph. Um, so we're just going to have to live with it a little bit. All right, so that's going to start with my, my block-in shape. I'm not going to go super far with this, except for switching to the multi-cut tool and then holding control and middle mouse clicking to drop a um, edge loop down in the middle just to kind of break it up. And I'll do it there too. So control, middle mouse click on an edge just to add some more topology in there. Okay, so that's a start with that. Let's go ahead and I'm going to drop in a new cube. And in the 3D view, I'm just going to switch the Move tool, pull this up. 
And I'm gonna use a basic box modeling kind of technique to get this shape. Um, we're not gonna to go too specific in just um, all the techniques of box modeling, um, but in general, and generally when I say box modeling, what I mean is starting from a cube or a primitive shape and extruding out to get that shape and matching the shape and using other tools like multi-cut and others to kind of try to add new top edge loops. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take this. The first thing I'm gonna do is I want a center line, right? So I want a line that goes down the middle of it. That's gonna, so I could, if I needed to cut my model in half and mirror it across the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to my attribute editor and subdivision uh, depth, we're gonna set to two. And subdivision height, I'm gonna go ahead and also set to two. And uh, not, not subdivision height, let's do subdivision width. There we go. So we'll have a midline going this way and a midline going this way. Okay, what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on symmetry. So I'm actually gonna use the modeling toolkit. And I have a, I'll have another video for a modeling toolkit, but generally speaking, this is a cool collection area for a lot of the most common modeling tools that you're gonna use including symmetry, which is also located up here. So I'm gonna turn on object. Um, let's see, we're gonna be doing this in the x-axis. Okay, so we're gonna do symmetry, object x. Okay. So you'll see when I select one side, it selects the other. Okay, now let's go ahead and start extruding. So I click this button right here, this extrude button. And I'm gonna come back to this front view and we're gonna move it out. And I'm gonna move it down until I get to this end. Okay. And now I'm going to scale it down so that it kind of matches the right size. And I might rotate a little bit so it's pointing down like that. I don't have any other pictures, so I don't know exactly what that shape is. We're just going to kind of approximate here. Okay. So I'm going to come over to the multi cut tool. I'm going to drop an edge loop down in the middle. I'm going to grab this edge loop. And back in this view, we're just going to move it up, scale it down on our y axis, move it up. Okay, and let's go ahead and grab these guys. I wasn't really matching the shape up here, which I should have done at the beginning. Just bring this stuff up. Okay, all right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and drop a new edge loop there. I'm gonna hold Control, middle mouse click with the multi-cut tool in those spots. And let's just kind of fix that curvature a little bit. So we'll just continue this curvature instead of keeping it flat. And I'll just move this one up this way. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and talk about, actually, before I do anything else, I'm going to widen this a little bit because this hilt should be a little bit wider than the handle itself. We have a little bit of room. So um, let's go ahead and talk about smooth preview. So normally when we want to smooth our mesh and add, we'll make it look more complete, right? Right now it doesn't look that great. Um, theoretically, you can come to mesh and then smooth, right? That's going to kind of smooth out the shape and add more edge loops. But the problem with that is, adding more edge loops makes our models harder to work with. So I'm going to be using Smooth Preview, which is done by pressing 3 on your keyboard. And so what it does is it does the same thing as Mesh Smooth. So what it does is it cuts your mesh into more polygons and smooths them out to get a more softer curve. But um, I'm not actually adding topology. And I can switch it off whenever I want to by pressing the 1 key on my keyboard. So 3 on my keyboard is Smooth Preview, and 1 is Flat Shaded or Normal Mode. It turns off Smooth Preview. If I come over to the attribute editor, I can also find that under the second tab under smooth mesh. And that's the same thing if I just turn this on. Okay, so with that smooth preview, I can make my mesh look smoother. Um, and I'm gonna add some more edge loops. So I wanna, I'm probably gonna add another edge loop in here because I'm noticing this is getting a little too soft and curved. So I'll come here, control, middle mouse, and let's look at that with smooth preview. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop an edge loop like that, control, middle mouse, click. But let's look at the smooth preview mode and see how that changes the shape. So when I control middle mouse click it, you'll see that shape is actually changing because the closer your edges are, uh, when you ever when you smooth it out or you enter smooth preview mode, um, the closer the edges are, the tighter or the sharper your edges and curvature or your corners are going to be. So you'll see if I go back in here, I'll, I'll drop another edge loop that's really close right there. See how just adding that other edge loop that's really close to the other one really changes the uh, shape of the curvature. So before I do that though, I'm gonna go back out here. I'm gonna try to get this little shape down at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these guys and I'll just kind of flatten them out a little bit. 
Let's grab that center edge and pull that up. OK, so I'm going to grab these guys, Oops. pull them back, and I'm going to go ahead and extrude them out. So I'm going to do Control E to extrude, and just going to extrude it out. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Rotate it down a little bit, something like this. Maybe a little less than this axis, and then I'll extrude it more. And we'll just scale this one down. Okay, something like that maybe. It's not pretty, but it's going to do the job for now. Without getting too complex with our um, tools. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of an edge right here. So this we have like a little transition between this little bulb and the rest of it. So what I do is I'm going to hold Control and left click right there. Now you'll see that that has a little bit of sharpness right there. For you. If I can come here, if I want to be nitpicky, I can go ahead and try to make this shape a little bit more interesting or uh, clean how I want it to be. Just going through and cleaning up that shape a little bit. Let's grab these top parts and we'll go ahead and bring them down as well. Okay, before I go much further, uh, I'm going to add more edge loops in here. I'm going to go ahead and switch to a different material. So to or add a new material, I'm going to select my geometry, right click, assign new material while I'm holding right click, just like when you're switching between um, object mode to different mode. So assign existing material, or new material, sorry. Now I'll come over here and I'm going to select a blend or fong material. I'm going to go with blend. And this pops up the attributes for your material and the attribute editor. You don't have to worry about them, the, the settings that much, but we're going to bring the color a little bit darker. And what I like about the blend material compared to the default Lambert material is that it has this shiny component to it. And that's going to help me kind of see surface abrasions a little bit better and determine the quality of my surfaces and my um, edges and corners. All right, so now I'm going to come in here and I'm again pressing one and three on my keyboard to switch between smooth preview and turning it off. So smooth preview, turning it off. I'm going to use the multi cut tool. Switch back to that and hold control middle mouse click to drop in some new edge loops. So control middle click, control middle click, control middle click. So that gives me a little bit more of a square curvature to the edges right there, which is nice. And you can see how that blend material is kind of identifying some potential problem areas for me. So I'm getting a little bit of like a uh, irregular shape right there because of how this is uh, how this is shaped right here, um, which I would want to smooth out and clean up a little bit later on, but um, for the sake of this video, we're not going to go into that too much. Um, in real life, uh, this handle and the blade would look, likely be more attached to each other, and then the hilt is kind of slid on top of them, right? So this hilt is kind of between the handle and the uh, blade. In my case, just for the sake of demonstrating this, I want to go ahead and weld these two pieces together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece right here, and in order to weld them together, I need to prepare an area for them to bridge together. So I want to select this hilt right here, or the, yeah, the hilt, and I'm going to find a hole that I'm going to connect. So in order to do this, the main th thing I need to keep in mind is these objects need to be combined together. And then also, wherever I'm going to bridge them across, they need the same exact number of edges. Um, I determined here when I created this that this is going to be eight edges. Um, and uh, so I'm going to need a hole on this object that is eight edges around so for it to accurately bridge across. Um, I'm going to go, like my favorite, I'll show you really quickly. My favorite number, and I mentioned this earlier, is um, when I'm working with polygons and extrusions and primitive shapes, is eight. Eight is a really friendly number. And so let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. And I'm going to turn off symmetry. So here I have four polygons. And let's go ahead and take this plane and we'll drop it a little bit lower. Let's do four and four. If I take an object and I want to extrude it, right, or I just want to round it out into a different shape, with a square, you can't really do that, right? I can't round the shape, shape out, right? Because if I bring a corner in, it's always going to be a quadrilateral, right, no matter how I manipulate it. You can smooth it out, of course. So if I grab this and delete that, you know, you can get a circle, but that's not always reliable. Um, even though this is just a square and has four sides, when you do smooth preview with three and the keyboard, 
it will come into a, cir a circle. But in my opinion, it's not. It's best to not rely on that too much. What I do is instead, I'm going to select uh, four polygons or eight edges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So whenever I select four polygons, um, I can grab their uh, and or eight edges. I can grab their corners and I can bring them in. And so without even smooth preview, um, I already have like a rounded curved shape. And so this is a really nice fundamental shape to work with this four polygons or eight edges. Um, gives you a nice rounded kind of circular shape that you can work with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure, let me go ahead and I'm going to click on this button right here, which is isolate selected, which is gonna hide everything else. And I'm gonna choose um, an eight sided or make create an eight sided hole because my handle has eight sides to it. So I can select these four polygons. Let's make sure I only have those four selected. And bef actually, before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this and this out because I can see that this is a little too tight. I need a little bit more space. So I'm going to pull those vertices out. I'm going to have to do the same with these vertices. And I'm also going to make sure I'm using my modeling toolkit and use my edge slide so that when I scale them over, they slide along the surface instead of turning that off, just coming off the mesh like that. I'm going to go ahead and edge slide. We'll scale them away from each other or use symmetry and just move them. All right, let's go back to my object. So I'm going to go ahead and select these four faces, and I'm going to delete them. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine my objects together. And I'm turning off the isolate selected by pressing this button right here. I'm also I'm using the keyboard hotkey or shortcut, which is Control One. Um, so if you ever see me do that, that's what's up, what I'm doing. So I'll select both of these guys. I'm going to go to Mesh Combine, and I'm just going to select both of these edges, and I want to click Bridge. Okay. Now when I smooth that out, there we go. Those are welded together. Okay, let's keep moving. Let's go move on to the blade. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm probably going to start. I can start with the cube. In my case, I'm just going to start with the plane, right? It's going to be a very, very flat object, and I'm just going to give it thickness later on. Um, so let's go to the attribute editor. I want to set this to 2 and, let's say, 1. So I'm left with something like this. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to hold J so it snaps every 15 degrees. I'm going to rotate it till it's 90 degrees pointing up. Or I can do that in the channel box by just typing rotate x90. I'm going to move it up here, okay, and now I'm going to come to vertex mode and oops, let's go ahead and turn off edge slide in my modeling toolkit. I'll go ahead and scale that out and I'll pull this all the way down close to the tip. I'll be just shy of the tip and I'll show you later why I'm doing this. And so let's take a look at this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to go ahead and extrude this downwards. So extrude it down. And I'm just going to grab, let's go to vertex mode. We'll grab this vertice, pull it down to the tip, and we'll go ahead and scale these guys in. Get that tip shape. All right. I'm going to use the multi-cut tool. I'm going to drop an edge here because I know I'm going to want to uh, have this Essentially, it's a blood channel, but it's this channel on the sword, this shape right here. And we'll put a little bit, we'll put a few more in here. So I'm going to hold Control, Middle Mouse Click, Control, Middle Mouse Click, Control, Middle Mouse Click. Okay. I want to add one more uh, right here, uh, right above where that tip is going to be on that channel. Just hold Control and left click to drop it in. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut in or carve in this shape of that channel. And let me go ahead and turn on X symmetry so I can get both sides at the same time. So we're going to start from up here. And I'm not going to worry about the left side so much uh, because remember this is a little asymmetrical, the photograph. And I'm just going to pull it down to here and we're going to have it finish right there. And we're going to press enter. Okay. And now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this in 3D. So I'm going to grab all of these guys, all the way up to here. And 
right now it's very flat, so I need this middle part to kind of be out like this when it comes to uh, a bladed edge, right? So most of it's thick except for the bladed edge. And I'll just go ahead and pick that. And I also want this channel part to be pushed into the mesh. So I'll be pushing this in like that. Okay. Um, what we also want to do is let's go ahead and assign our uh, blend material to this. So we'll assign, I'll go down to existing material and just choose the blend I created. And we'll go ahead and smooth that out. So we smooth it out and it looks pretty decent, right? Nothing too drastically wrong with it. Um, I want this to have a sharper edge to it though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab these edges right here. And actually, no, actually, instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold, use the multi-cut tool, and I'm going to drop in an edge loop that goes tight and around these guys. And what it's going to have an added benefit of adding a little bit of extra shaping to this middle part right here as well. So I'll go ahead and drop that in. And so you can see when I drop that in that now I have that a little bit of sharpness back to that blood channel, and that goes all the way down like that. I'm also going to go ahead and uh, let's look at this flash preview mode, suppressing one on my keyboard. I come in here, I'm going to hold control and middle mouse click right there. You'll see it stopped right there, but that's okay because those are those were previously triangles, and so now it's a four-sided polygon. That new edge I just cut through, I cut that into. So you can see there's the three-sided polygons. Hold control, middle mouse click, now they're four-sided polygons. They're just a little bit funny shaped. If I want to, I can come in here and try to reshape this area right here. Um, this area is actually a bit of a problem in normal circumstances. I have a, a six-sided, or actually one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, it's a six-sided pole right here. Um, and that tends to, you can see how much it's pulling and stretching in really weird ways when I go to smooth preview. And that's not ideal for um, topology. But in our case, I don't want us to get too deep into more complex modeling techniques to solve that issue. Um, so we're going to leave it how it is. And it doesn't really stand out too much with this simplified model. Uh, but it's something that you should keep in mind that it's not ideal um, because of how it distorts the surface, that six-sided polygon right there. And even these guys right here aren't the best. There's better methods of probably making this channel right here but we're not going to worry about them right now because we want to keep this fairly simple. Okay, I'm also going to probably add a few more edge loops. So I'll come in here, we'll just hold control, middle mouse click. And let's before we do that, let's take a look at how it's affecting the mesh when I go to smooth preview. So press three for smooth preview, drop that in. That's not really changing much, so maybe I don't need to add that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this um, piece right here. And now I need to mirror it. We haven't done mirroring yet, so I'm going to show you guys how we're going to do that. Um, I'm going to close out my mirror toolkit. And we're going to go to Mesh, Mirror. Okay. And right now it looks like it's done nothing because it's mirrored across the x-axis. That's not the axis we want to mirror across. We want to mirror in the z-direction. Let's go to World, right? So the z-direction, the blue axis. I'm going to control Z back a second. And let's go ahead and mirror across. And we're going to change this right here. It says axis. We're going to change that to the Z axis. Okay. Let me look at this in flat shaded mode and make sure it's looking okay. Um, so in some cases, you might have your mesh. Let me go ahead and just intentionally make this not great. So I'll just move it forward a touch. And I have a video on mirroring. So if you run into these particular ear, um, issues, um, Please check that out. But you can see here we're getting a weird issue here at this boundary because those vertices aren't actually lining up. So I'm going to control Z that back. Um, and so if I wanted to, what I would have to do is I'd have to either, let's go ahead and move that actually back forward again so we can get that problem again. So I'll go ahead and do mirror. Let's go ahead and set to the Z axis. Okay, now it's actually working. Here we go, I just recreated the problem. So our mesh wasn't actually in the center of our scene, and so uh, the axis position is a world. And let's go ahead and show you where that center line is. And actually, let's look at it from 
a different camera. So I'll go in here, go to perspective or panels, and we'll go to side view and we'll turn on the grid. So you can see it's actually not lined up in the center of the scene. It was a little bit off. And so that's it right now. What it's doing is it's mirroring across the world Z axis. I can switch this to the object Y axis, right? You can see because its own personal axis is actually lined up in the center, I can mirror it across its own axis. Um, but what I probably want to do is I probably want to control Z this back and just move this back until it's right on the X axis as much as possible or in, in the middle of the scene across the z-axis. So that's selected, I'll go ahead and click mirror. And we'll merge this, put this, or mirror this across the z-axis. Okay. So I ran into some weird geometry issue, so I just had to undo that. So I'll go to axis, z-axis. And I want to bring this merge threshold a little bit higher because I can kind of see that they're not quite merging together. There's still a little bit of a gap, so we can try taking this to like 0 0.01. And you'll see what it's going to do with the merge threshold. It's going to look at the ed vertices that are nearest to that center line or that where you're mirroring across. And if you use a little bit of higher value, it'll grab more vertices and weld them together or merge them together. Okay. So let's go ahead and turn off that grid again. And we'll set this back to the front view. And so let's take a look at this and let's go ahead and do smooth preview. So that front part's looking good. It's mirrored across, but this edge is a little dull. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I have two options um, that I'm going to show you. So the first is I could, as we looked at before, we could drop in a what's called a holding edge, right? A new edge loop that's right next to that smoothed edge right there. And when we do that, it sharpens that edge, right? The closer these edges are, the tighter these edges are next to each other, the tighter this edge or this curvature becomes. So it's going to look sharper. I want to do the same thing, but in a diff slightly different way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select my um, edge loop that goes all the way around. Okay. And with that selected, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the bevel tool. So I'm not sure if at this point, when you watch this video, if you're familiar with the bevel tool, but the bevel tool usually just takes an edge and splits it into a planar um, face. See that it adds a new face. It splits that edge into a face. And we have a couple options in this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to turn off chamfer. And when you do that, what it does is it actually leaves your edge that was there before. You can see I can move this fraction value, right? It keeps that edge that you had before. That was um, right there. Let's go ahead and control Z right here. So I'll come up here to bevel, turn off chamfer. You'll see it leaves that edge and then it drops a new edge loop on either side. And so it's kind of that's kind of like the same thing as if I grab this and I just use the multi-cut tool to drop an edge loop on either side of that. I'm just gonna do it just show in two different ways. Let's go ahead and turn off chamfer. And now let's go ahead and press three on my keyboard to get smooth preview. And there we go. It's looking pretty decent. Um, this part up here is feeling a little hmm, feeling a little soft up here. So what I might do is I might need to slide those edges closer. So what I might do is I'm grab these guys up to here. And I'm going to go to the modeling toolkit. And I'm going to turn on transform constraints, edge slide. And I'm just going to move them a little bit closer. Let's take a look at some smooth preview so we can see it a bit better. Just get those a little tighter. Not We don't want it all the way over because you'll see it actually mer almost merges with the other edge. But you can get it can be deceiving in smooth preview. So I'm just switching back to flat so I can see it and make sure I have just a little slightly give it a little bit of a gap. But you can see that's much sharper now. Okay, let's complete this by doing the pommel. So I've got this pommel shape up here, and I'm going to start this from a different primitive. So I'm going to go ahead and use a cylinder. And the cylinder I've created is an eight-sided cylinder. So again, um, similar to the handle. And it's going to be pretty easy to also weld on weld the handle to this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the attribute editor and I'm going to go ahead and add a subdivision to my cap. Okay. I'm going to rotate this. So I'm just going to rotate it in the X 90 degrees. We'll scale it down. Okay. I'm going to try to match the shape a little bit better. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this face right here. 
And let me turn off the X symmetry. We're going to turn on Z symmetry because I want to get both sides. Let me go ahead and make sure I'm grabbing both sides. It looks like I might have... Let's do world Z. There we go. Well, I tried world Z um, objects. It was probably object Y. It's probably what I wanted. Um, but anyway, so I did world Z up here. And I'm going to go ahead and extrude. So control E on my keyboard. And then I'm going to go ahead and... Actually, let me go ahead and undo that really quickly. Control E. We'll do offset. So let's pull this in. So it's about the shape of that smaller circle inside. Right around here. And I'm going to go ahead and now extrude this again. Control E. And I'm going to pull it up. Oh. Oh, I have a edge light turned on. So transform to train on the modeling toolkit. So I'll turn that off. I'll pull that forward. Scale it down a little bit. And I'll just go ahead and extrude it again. Oh, if I miss one side, that's okay. We'll just mirror it across. Extrude it again. Move that forward. Scale it down. Oops. Let me go ahead and control Z back to this because I think there's something about my world Z. So I undid the, my symmetry somehow by accident. So it was messing up my scaling tool. So I'll scale that down. Scale. You can go ahead and pull that off a little bit. Switch to scale tool. Move it down. And extrude it one more time. Switch to the scale tool. And bring that down. Okay. And then uh, what I'll do is let's go ahead and assign our blend to this object. Go to object mode. Right click, go down to assign existing material blend. Okay, let's move that out. You can see I have a little bit of flat right there. So what I want to do is I'm going to grab this vertice right here and pull it out just a bit to kind of help. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a center edge loop here. Let's go ahead and turn off my symmetry. Okay. Because I'm going to want to mirror across in a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten these edges a bit or give a little bit of a sharpness or a corner to it. So I'm going to select this edge loop that goes all the way around. I go to bevel. I bring the fraction down so they're closer. And we can see what that looks like with smooth preview on. Right. When I bring that fraction down tighter, that's a harder edge and larger fraction spaces those edges out. And so you get a softer curvature, but let's go ahead and make it tighter. I'll do the same thing on this one too. Let's go ahead and do bevel. And a slightly smaller fraction. And that gives us tighter edges. I'd probably want to go ahead and add another edge loop, maybe on this side too. Looking at this, you can see with the smooth preview, it feels a little jagged in places. And that's just because I have, this is a fairly low poly object. It, it's just eight sided. I probably could have used a higher poly object and I, that curvature would be much nicer. I could also come over to my attribute editor, go to my first tab or my second tab, sorry. Open up that smooth mesh and then increase on this object, the subdivision preview levels. And you'll see when I increase them, it gets us become smoother and smoother and smoother. Okay, this part right here is a little funky looking. It's maybe bulging out too much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use Smooth Preview, or I'm sorry, um, Soft Select. So with my uh, Move tool selected, come over to my Tool Settings, or click up here to open your Tool Settings. And I'm going to come down to Soft Select. I'm going to turn that on. So just a quick recap, if you haven't seen the video on Soft Select, Soft Select just lets you um, grab a vertice, and then it has a fall off from that vertice in a direction that um, also influences other vertices depending on how far away they are. So you'll see when they're yellow, um, essentially they're going to move a lot, right? And if they're as they fall off to red, orange, and black, they're going to have less and less movement to it. So this part, the part that's close, the parts that are closest to my um, selection are going to move a lot more, and the parts that are furthest away are going to move less. We'll pull that down. If I need to play with this um, fall off value, right? So this fall off value might not be what you need, right? So it might be something really, really large like this. And it's just move your entire mesh. That just means my fall off is way too large. So I'm going to come in here and I just I can drag on this little value right here, this fall off radius. Okay. And uh, I, another tool you can use is you can hold B on your keyboard and left click and drag in your viewport, and you'll see it's going to give you an interactive fall off changer. Uh, I want to get this so it just barely touches this ring right here. It doesn't 
influence these guys. I'll just pull that back and just kind of flatten that out. It was a little too funky looking. Um, something I want to also uh, talk about here is um, you have these different curvatures and fallouts, and I'll cover this more in a um, soft select video. Um, but let me actually go ahead and show you guys this on. I'm going to grab a cylinder. And I'm going to go ahead and do round cap and give it some subdivisions. Oh, actually, no round cap, sorry. Just give it subdivisions of a cap. OK, there we go. So this is a flat object. The reason why I want to do this is I'm, this is just for example purposes. Don't worry about exactly what I'm doing. So I want to come in here. I'm going to grab that center vertice. And you can see how this fall off actually changes it's, um, changes this curvature of this essentially this hill that's being created when I pull on this, right? So you can see this is going to get, let's get, get more subdivisions to my cat. There we go. And I'll just delete these guys. Okay. And that. So I'll grab that vertice right there. And now you'll see with this curvature, this is like the top of my selection. And then this is the, the outside corner or edges of my selection. You can see it kind of starts to take on that curvature. See that kind of slope that starts out, um, uh, eases, eases into the slope, has a, a steeper slope here, and then eases out right there. So eases in, steep, eases out. Um, I can, so I can change that curvature actually of that slope. So we saw here with this kind of hill shape right here, when we pull this up, that soft select creates a hill shape. And if I come over here and I do the linear, so we have this linear fall off. When I drag this up, you'll see that slope of that extrusion or that soft select is actually now linear. So something that could be kind of useful depending on the situation. Here you can see I have like a ripple effect. When I pull that up, I get like a ripple shape going on. Okay, back to this guy. Um, so that uh, soft select option is really handy for, let me go ahead and set this back to default, uh, is really handy for um, modifying in a very kind of elastic and smooth way um, my my vertices without having to move like one at a time or an entire edge loop at a time. So I'll just grab this and let's go ahead and shrink that back in a little bit more just to flatten it out. Okay, um, so let's take a look at this really quickly. It's looking okay. I'm going to go ahead and add another edge loop in there just to kind of um, sharpen that transition right there. So I'll add another edge loop. Let's turn off soft select. So I'm just going. If I move to select, I just came in here and turned off my soft select. And let's look at a smooth preview. I'm just going to pull that back so I can. I'm looking at a smooth preview so I can see this modify how this modification is making an adjustment to my mesh. So I'll pull that back until it's like that. Okay. Um, I'm not going to get too far into the details that are actually on this one, right? So I could it has this like a uh, text on it. Um, we're obviously not going to do that, and I think I wouldn't even recommend doing that in the modeling. I would do that in text string instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my mesh. Let's go ahead and pull this edge forward a little bit. And I might actually scale this y-axis a little bit, just to give myself a little bit of room to attach it to the, the, the pommel to the handle. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this side. Double-click, delete. I want to go ahead and mirror that. So I want to mirror it in this axis. So I'll go and select mirror. And we're going to change the axis to Z. And we'll adjust that merge threshold value if we need to to make sure those um, center edges or the center vertices are actually welded together. But that's good enough for now. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these faces. I'm going to get them prepared to extrude and connect here. So what I do is I'm going to extrude down. I'll go ahead and flatten this down. And we get to here. All right. We're just going to grab these vertices. And we're going to scale them down. And I'm just going to take my whole object and scale in the wax a little bit more. With this object selected, I'm going to go ahead and let's bring this over so I can see the isolate selected button. Click that. Let's go ahead and delete these vertices. Don't need them anymore. Or faces. Okay. Delete. 
Okay, I'm going to unisolate. Okay, and I'm going to let's go ahead and combine these guys together. So we'll take both of them, and I'm going to go to Mesh, Combine. I'm going to grab this edge loop right here on that handle. I'll pull it down a little bit more. I didn't give myself enough space really here. I can move these guys up a bit. All right, so I'll take both of those um, edge loops, and I'm going to bridge them across. Okay. And let's take a look at that smooth preview. Oh, they have different materials, so let me go ahead and make sure they both have the same material. Let's assign a different material. Um, three, I think, is what it was, that darker value. And so I can play with this transition shape here. Um, and this is where I'm probably going to be fighting a little bit with uh, how little, how few polygons I'm actually working with. So I'm going to go ahead and ease that out a little bit. Let's this one right here. Let's give it a nice, nicer curvature to it. Um, but because I had so many, so few polygons on this object up here, um, I've had to connect it up this way instead of in a more local space. If instead I had started with a cylinder, let's go ahead and pull the cylinder over to the side, and I use a cylinder that actually, and let's do a single subdivision on the cap. Let's say I did something like 16, so double the size, and do height. Let's actually do this much. I'll just show you guys really quickly. And I will go ahead and start with, I'll just simulate my uh, my handle again. Pull that down. I'll just delete that face right there. So it still has eight, but this one has much a lot more um, topology. So let's grab these guys, scale them this way. Prepare that hole. Just like that, that. Delete. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna grab this guy and maybe scale it down a little bit because I think it's a little too wide. Okay. And I'm gonna move these guys up a little bit. And move them out and move them up a little bit. And what I can do here is if I merge these guys together. Combine them. And I'll go and bridge this across. And I'll just try to play with this curvature a little bit better so it looks a bit nicer. I want to get a smaller transition area so you can see it's not stretching all the way up and we're not getting this weird little ramp going up the side of the mesh like we do up here. Right? And that's just because we just didn't have enough topology. So it's just a consideration. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Just I just wanted to keep this simple. Um, this isn't going to be the prettiest version of this model that you can get. Um, I just wanted to kind of show you guys how we can model something like this pretty simply. Um, one last thing I'm going to do is just a little touch that is really not necessary, um, but I just want to show you guys. Um, let's go ahead and hide my model. So I'm going to do Control H. I just want to show that, uh, hide that. So this is actually a pretty complex um, object, this uh, handle wrapper. So it's probably like a piece of leather. Um, and I'm it, just from this picture alone, I don't know how it's actually connected together. There's probably, maybe it's a single piece that wraps onto itself and it's stitched together, or maybe it's multiple pieces. It's kind of hard to tell. Let's go ahead and control Z this back. I'm just going to create a very basic kind of handle shape. That's just a, an extrusion of this mesh right here. So I want to work with my existing handle, right? So I have the handle here that has an, all the shape. I don't want to make a new shape a new cylinder and put it onto there and just try to match the shape. That's going to take too long. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select my handle and go to Edit, Duplicate. I turn on Isolate Selected. So I'm looking at this duplicated handle. I'm going to select this edge loop right here, this edge loop right here, and I'm going to detach these these guys right here from the rest of this. So I'm going to go to Edit Mesh. We're going to go to Detach, and now when I double click on this, you'll see that this is now disconnected. So what I'll do is I'll select the, uh, the pommel and the hilt, and I'll delete them. Okay. And now let's go ahead and un-isolate. And I'm going to go to face mode. But you'll see I'm accidentally selecting this other object, which can be difficult when you have objects right on top of each other. You want to go edit one of them, but you're accidentally selecting the other one. What I can do is I can go up here to component, select by component type right here. 
click on that. And now I'm whatever object I've selected, it's going to force me into that face or edge mode. So that's just another way you can get there instead of doing the right click option. And so I'll select all this geometry right here and I'll go ahead and extrude it out. I'll just give it a little bit of thickness. I'm going to hold control and shift on my uh, keyboard. So it, the thickness grows up very gradually. Go back to object mode. Let's go ahead and isolate it again. So my problem is it's kind of losing a lot of the shape around these corners right here, or these um, edges right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in an edge loop on either side. Okay, and that's just going to tighten that, ed that area up a little bit. And I also don't really actually need the interior. So if I wanted to, I can come in here and, oops, let's go to face mode. I could select these insides and I could delete them because really they're not necessary. And um, if anything, it, nobody's ever going to see them and they add to my um, polygon count. So I'll go ahead and do this. I'll unisolate. I'll turn that back on smooth preview. I'm going to assign a new material to this. So I'll go assign new material, blend. And I'll make this a darker color so we know that that bolt is there or that um, hand grip is there. And if I wanted to, I could. I might want to make this a little bit thicker. It's a little too tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these faces on the outside. Oh, I messed that one up. So I'll just select this one. I'm going to show you guys a neat little trick. Is if you want to move, I could probably actually just scale this like that. That's honestly probably easier. Uh, I'll show you guys a neat little trick just so you guys are deprived of a neat little trick. Um, let's go and take a look at something like this object right here. Let's say I wanted to, let's say I wanted to move these faces out along their normals. So they're kind of moving out along their face normal, just like I was extruding, right? If I extrude and I move it along my local Z, it's going to go in a particular direction, but it doesn't necessarily line up with, you know, my the default coordinates of axes or these different default coordinates or these axes of, of z x and y what i can do is i can select these edge loops here or these faces um, and then what i can do is i can hold I go to the move tool and i can hold control and middle mouse click and what that's going to do is it's going to translate whatever you have selected along their normal right so those the, how you're translating it is not along any of these axes, right, or orientation, the world axes orientation. It's not around the object's axes or orientation. It's along each polygon's um, axes of orientation. So it's control, then it'll mouse click. And you'll see that's going to move those polygons along their normal. So it's just a little trick, a neat little tip that's um, some is actually I tend to use it pretty frequently, especially if I want to make something feel like it's thicker. Um, so let's select these guys. Let me show you guys that. Make this. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and switch the move tool, control, middle mouse click. I'm just going to move those polygons out that way. And I'll just switch to a smooth preview. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on this one. And take a look at that. And so that's looking pretty good. Um, all that's left for me is to go to the, my outliner. Let's get rid of that. That's my old sword that I had. Um, so now that I'm done with everything, I can delete my image plane. I don't need that anymore. And let's also just go to the single view so we don't have to look at that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select all by geometry and go edit, delete all by type history. And I'm going to go ahead and delete these empty groups that showed up. And that's that just that was whenever we combined our objects together, it leaves behind these little empty groups. And I'll name these. So this one will be called Sword Blade. I'm using camel case instead of spaces because spaces aren't very good. Um, we'll call this one Hilt. We'll call this one grippy. Okay. And I'll select all three of these and I'll go ahead and group them together and I'll call this one sword. And with grouping, I'm just going edit. Just go sword underscore capital G E O or G O. Okay. So that's just a nice, tidy way of cleaning it up. So um, definitely do that if you guys can. 